Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to upload files and change file permissions for your Perl CGI script. So here I have, I'm logged in to FileZilla into my website and on the left side here I have uh, a CGI file and I want to put it over into my website and then test and run it. So I've connected to my server and I'm if you have a folder called public HTML, I'm going to open that. Other times you may have um, a domain name like this. Uh, so I'm a dccstudent.com. So I'm going to open that. I'm going to ignore the CGI bin that is before this. Uh, so if you have a domain name, you're usually going to go into that folder. And then within that folder, you'll find a CGI bin. Now this is for CGI binaries. This is where your CGI scripts will typically go. It's not necessarily a requirement, but generally that's how it's set up with a lot of web hosts. So you'll look for CGI bin, and if you don't have one, check with your web host to see whether you have to have them in a CGI bin. If you need to make your own folder, um, a lot of times if there isn't a folder there then they don't require you to have them in there. Uh, but also you want to double check and make sure too that they do offer uh, the CGI access or that they have um, Perl installed on their web server that you can use. So I'm going to open my CGI bin and to put my script over there I'm just going to find it over on the left side of my screen. Also with FileZilla, if you have another folder someplace, you can open it and drag it in from that folder as well. So I'm just gonna take this, drag it over. It's going to upload. Now for getting your CGI script to work, if, you are, if your web host is a Unix or Linux server, then you have to change the file permissions. In other words, you have to give permission for the server to execute the script. This is an executable program. So it's not like an HTML file where everybody can just read it. This is actually going to execute and run a program on the server, which in some instances can be a security risk. So to change the file permissions on this, and again this is only going to apply if you're a Unix or Linux hosted server. If you have a Windows server, you don't need to do anything else to your file once you've uploaded it. But for the additional security on Linux and um, Unix machines, we have to change the file permissions. So the best way to do that is to just click, single click on the file and then right click on it and usually there'll be an option like file permissions and depending on the FTP program that you're using it may have uh, CHMOD CHMOD is um, also for file permissions change the modification or we change our who's allowed to do what to this file so in this screen, and again, depending on the FTP program that you're using, uh, it might look slightly different, but usually there's a place where you can type in a numeric value for what you're going to allow users to do with this file. And you can see the default is 644, which means we, we break it down this way. Owner permissions, you are the owner of this file. So you automatically have read and write permission. Then we have group permission and public permission. And as far as our CGI scripts are concerned, the group and public is the rest of the world. So this is what we want the rest of the world to be able to do to your script. So for an owner, you should give yourself full permission. So when I change this, you'll see that this first number changes. So the first number represents the owner permissions. The second one is the group permissions, and then the third one is public permissions. And then each of these have a numeric value assigned. So if I uncheck these,
you can see that read permission is four and then write permission brings that to six and then execute is seven. So as an owner, you want to read, write, and execute. Group permissions and public permissions, as I said, is the rest of the world. So this script, you have to think in terms of, okay, what does everybody else need to be able to do when this script runs? They need to be able to read it so that um, the server can actually read the file. We don't need to write any information with this file, so we don't want to check off anything for write, but we do want to give everybody else execute permissions. And if you're ever reading in any of the documentation for CGI programs, um, maybe you're installing something that somebody else has written, and it'll say, you know, upload the file to your server and give it 755 permissions. So now you know that once you load the file up, you have to change the file permissions. And then I'm going to click OK. So now I've changed the file permission on here, and on this particular FTP program, I'm using FileZilla, you can see that it um, has the file permissions listed there. So you can do a quick glance over if, if something is not working right. So then the next thing you want to do is to um, test your script and see if it worked. So I'm just going to pop up a browser window here. And my website is imadcccstudent.com. And then I have a CGI folder. So I'm going to put in CGI bin and the name of the file. So in this case, it's lab1.cgi. So when I press enter, as long as everything works OK, you uh, should be able to see the result of your first lab assignment. Now, if things don't go correctly, you might get a, an error in here saying it was unable to process. And that could be because you have an error in your script. OK, so what I did was I uh, intentionally put an error in my script and re-uploaded it to the server. And you can see here, this is, now this is how this web host handles this type of an error. It says encountered an unexpected condition, uh, the script had an error in it and did not produce any output. Your error message may look similar to this or it might have some different syntax depending on the, um, the way your web host has it set up to deal with errors in CGI scripts. So what this means is there's something wrong with the file. Maybe you uh, missed a quote or a semicolon someplace. There's a syntax error. Generally, that is what it uh, boils down to is that you have an error in your script. The other thing that it may be um, is your code may be okay, but the shebang line, this could be wrong. And this could also give you the same type of an error. Remember, this must be the very first line in your code. You can't have anything else before it. No spaces, no comments. The Perl interpreter is looking for this path to where Perl is on the web server to be the very first thing it encounters in the script. So no comments before it, no spaces, no empty lines. And also you need to check and make sure that this path is the one that your web host has given you. They will tell you and if you don't, if you can't find it, you can, you know, email their tech support and say, what is the path to Perl? And they will send you back something that will look like this. It's user bin Perl like this is the most common. But I've seen it where, you know, you might have Perl bin Perl, something like that. So you want to make sure that this is the correct path to Perl on the web host server that you're using. And if you have that checked and you've uploaded your file and if you're using a, a Linux, Unix machine that you've changed the file permissions, uh, then 
it could be an error in your code later on. So you want to double check that in whatever editor that you're using to make sure that you don't have any syntax errors. And that's the basics of uploading a CGI script to your web server and doing a little bit of uh, troubleshooting and making sure that you are able to change the file permissions on Linux and Unix web servers.